We are now a few weeks away from the brand new release of the new WordPress Gutenberg editor. This is pretty much re uh, replacing the editor that we have at the moment called TinyMCE. So the question is, is Gutenberg going to be uh, usable enough for us to use it out of the box? So in this video, I'll be covering all its features, the latest update, and I'll also be talking about the best themes to use with the new editor, which is coming up soon. I'll also be talking about the future of page builders like Divi, Elementor, and uh, Thrive Architect. So just to let you know, these are my opinions. These opinions are not uh, backed by um, any companies that I mentioned in this video. And also, if you're brand new to WordPress or you want to improve your WordPress skills, I have a course which I'm giving away absolutely free. This course is called WordPress Mastery. All you have to do is to go to the link in the show notes below and have access to that course. All right, so let's get started. So um, I logged into my uh, demo website and I realized that there was an update here from uh, Gutenberg. And this was, um, this was released a few days ago. Now, if we take a look here at um, the version details, and by the way, this is version 2.3.0. Uh, I can see I can see here straight away that uh, we still have quite a lot of one stars. So that means uh, a lot of people are not really satisfied by uh, the way it works. And that includes me as well, as we shall cover in this video. And um, we also have some five stars here. So that's quite interesting. But from what I see, this has improved compared to when it first released. So they are definitely getting better. Okay, so I'm not going to go through the whole list of uh, things here. What I will do is I will just click on update and then let's see how this is usable. Now, I also would like to mention that if you want to use a Gutenberg with the basic WordPress theme, it's pretty much unusable. I mean, I've tried it. It restricts you so much. So what I've done is I've actually uh, downloaded a, a free theme called Astra. Now, this theme allows you to have full widths so that um, you're not distracted by that sidebar. So that link to Astra as well is in the show notes. Now, this is a free theme, by the way. They also have a paid version, which gives you extra options. And I use this in my website. Okay, so now the plugin has been updated. Let's take a look and see what changes there are. So I'm just going to come over here to pages, click on add new. Right, so I can see here out of the box, nothing much has changed. We can add a title here as before. So I'm just going to call this title. Right. So uh, if we want to add uh, more items here, all we've got to do is come to this plus uh, button to add our blocks and so on. But uh, for now, I'm just going to use uh, Lorem 2 because this is the website I use to copy and paste uh, content on my page. This saves me just typing information on my page. So let's say this is my story. I've just added it here like that. This theme, as I mentioned, is called Astra. So if you take a look here on the bottom uh, right here, there is what is known as extended settings. Now this allows us to either have a sidebar or not. So here we have custom setting. So we can actually say no sidebar. So that means the layout of our page will not have sidebars. Now you won't be able to do this with the normal WordPress theme. So this is why this is uh, really, really good. So if you want to add some uh, blocks, all you got to do is to come here, click this plus button, and these are all our blocks. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add quickly an image here, and then I'm going to upload it from the library, and I'm going to use this image here. Right. So as you can see here, there's no option to use uh, Divi, Elementor, or any of those page builder plugins. So this is what... Uh, these companies are working on behind the scenes to uh, to enable us to be able to use that. So now that I have this set, I'm just going to click on preview and I'm going to take a look at that page. So you can see here now that this page looks really nice, although I can't do quite a lot. But to be honest, in terms of the layout, I'm quite impressed with the way things are looking now because before uh, things were really close together and um, there wasn't any room for me to add my um, line height which is what we're used to when you use page builders. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on and uh, adding content. And then let's see how that uh, that is um, that shows on our page. Right. So I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to add two columns. So to add our columns now here, sometimes it might be very confusing because it has recent blocks, embeds and then saved. 
So all your blocks are under the blocks here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose columns. Now, here's one thing. So straight away, you can see here that, you know, it's quite difficult to see where the columns are. So this is one drawback with uh, using this uh, Gutenberg. So I'm just pasting my information in here. Now, my, my preview doesn't really look nice. It looks like everything is squished together. But if I click on preview, you'll notice that this looks much better. It takes uh, the width of my page. Now, here's a problem. Let's say you want to adjust your line height. If I come in here, we can take a look at all the settings here. And so far, I can't see anything that allows me to adjust my line height. And here's one other annoying thing. As you can see here on my preview, we do have this text quite close to my image. Now, if I wanted to add some padding to this, at the moment I can't. However, I can do it in CSS but I'm just talking about out of the box, you're trying to use this. I can't do that. So one workaround is to add a divider. So let's go ahead and do that and I'll show you why that doesn't work really well either. So uh, if I click this plus button here to add my block, in fact, I can search for my block here, which is really cool. So I'm gonna search for it. So here it's called a separator. Okay, so here's my separator here. I'm just gonna make sure it's at the top. Now, if I click on this, we're expecting to see some options here to, uh, to make some changes to it. And as you can see, I can't do anything with it. It's just a separator and that's it. So I can't adjust the height of the separator. And if I want to hide this line, I can't even do that, which is really, really annoying, really. So I'm going to come over here, click on publish. And um, OK, so there we go. So we have a separator there, but we can't stylize it. We can't do much to it. Okay, so uh, let's take a look here at what else we can do. So, um, oh, in fact, let's add another block. But this time, we're going to add a video block like that. So I'm going to go to my um, YouTube channel and grab a URL. Okay, so I'm going to paste my URL and click on Use URL. Okay, so I'm not sure what has happened there. So I'm just going to do Preview and let's take a look. Right, so as you can see, my video is not showing here. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong, so let's go back here again and uh, see how we can fix this. So I'm going to paste my URL one more time, and nothing is happening. Not sure if this is a bug or something is wrong with this, so let me try it one more time. I'm going to add a video. I'm going to add my URL in here. Right, so over here on the block, again, you can see I don't have uh, anything to, I mean, much to do here because this is the document and these are the settings for the block. So again, I've just, let me publish this. Maybe it's because the page is not published. So I'm going to click on view page. Still, so this is uh, what I'm talking about. I don't think uh, Gutenberg is ready to go out there unless they make radical changes before uh, the couple of weeks that they're left to uh, to release uh, WordPress, uh, uh, this WordPress Gutenberg editor. So as you can see, just adding a video is quite difficult. But um, again, if we take a look at some of these blocks, they're very, uh, there's very few things that we can do with them. Like, I mean, even if I come back here, if I take a look at the block, the only thing I can do here is to increase the size and um, drop cap on or off, alignment, text color and background color. And pretty much that's it. But if we take a look at Divi, if you use Divi or Elementor or um, Thrive Architect, you you have quite a lot of options. You know, you can um, add backgrounds, you can add uh, drop shadows. There's so much that you can do. So this is very limited in terms of what it can provide you as a designer. So this is why I don't think this is really anyway close to what we can get with our page builders. So now the question is, what is these page builders doing behind the scenes to uh, to integrate and make this work with with uh, Gutenberg. So I can tell you right now in terms of Divi, we are working behind the scenes very hard to find an integration which is going to work very well with Gutenberg. So there are going to be options where you can switch off this editor, the Gutenberg editor, and then use uh, Divi or any other page builder, which I think is the way I would go because I don't really need this uh, editor, to be honest. It looks slick, it's modern, it's 10 times better than what we have at the moment, which is a tiny MCE but nowhere near 
what we can get with uh, the current page builders on the market. So that's just my opinion. I know this has a potential to, uh, to change and it can actually uh, make a um, difference in the future. But if you think about it, by the time they catch up with, uh, let's say, Divi or, or any of these uh, current page builders, the current page builders are not, are not you know, just sitting still. They will be innovating more. So I think the gap between a fully functional Gutenberg editor is light years behind uh, what you'd get with uh, the page builders that we have at the moment. So one of the questions that I always get uh, via email and uh, when I do my live streams is, is Divi going to work with Gutenberg? And the answer is yes. It is going to definitely work, so you don't have to worry about that. And all your design elements, all those features that we have in, uh, in, in Divi right now will be there. So it's a matter of just finding a way of making it work with, with the new uh, Gutenberg editor. So um, that's, that's where things are at the moment. Now, if we take a look at the theme itself, the, the current theme that uh, WordPress has does not work really well with the Gutenberg editor. So you would have to use something that gives you more flexibility, like, like I mentioned before. You can add sidebars, remove sidebars, make the page full width, and uh, customize the size of uh, the width of your website. This you can't currently do with the uh, current uh, theme that comes from WordPress. And also, you'd like to uh, have flexibility of adding text, you know, customize uh, fonts on your website. And currently, you can't do that with the current theme. So this is... You know, a major drawback if you're a designer and you'd like to design awesome looking websites or even if you're an agency, because a lot of these changes that uh, you need to apply to your website need a lot of uh, uh, work. And currently you can't do that with this current editor. But as I mentioned, these, this is my um, this is my opinion. So I'd like to hear what you think about uh, the direction that WordPress is taking and currently how the Gutenberg editor is working and uh, how you think you'll be using it in the future. It'd be quite interesting to, uh, to share that. Uh, the other thing as well I need to uh, talk about is when you use uh, this uh, Gutenberg editor, there are, uh, there are certain things that uh, restrict you. Like for example, uh, if you were to add, let's say for example, this inner image, there's very few things that you can do with this in terms of um, styling the, the image. So for example here, I've clicked on the image and then if I take a look here at the block itself, you know, all I have, all the, all, uh, the only setting I have here is to change the size. So I can either leave it at full, large, medium, you know, uh, thumbnail and so on. Like for example, if I click on thumbnail, it now reduces to a thumbnail. And we also have uh, these corners here that you can drag uh, to resize it. So I'm just gonna go take it back to full. And even that, I've just taken it back to full, but, I've lost my size. I can't really bring it back to how it was. And again, these are the things that I'm talking about when, uh, when, uh, when using Gutenberg. So yes, I can't, I, can't even, uh, I can't even set it back to how it was, which is quite annoying really. So you can imagine if you're working on a project and this is what's happening, I would have to delete this and uh, perhaps even add it again uh, from the library. Okay, so the next thing we're going to take a look at is plugins. So how do plugins work with, uh, with the Gutenberg editor? So what I want to do is I'm going to come over here to my dashboard and uh, go to plugins. So the plugin we're going to install here is the Yoast SEO plugin. It's a very popular plugin. If you don't use it for your websites, I really recommend that because it's very good for SEO. So I'm going to come over here and click on add new. I'm just going to search for Yoast. Click install. Now, I haven't tried this before, but I'm really hoping that this would work with the uh, Gutenberg because you don't want your SEO to just go down the drain just because you've made an update. Okay, I've activated it now. Excellent. So now let's see what happens if we go to a page and uh, try to um, add some SEO. So right now you can see here it's all set. I'm going to come over here to pages, click on all pages. I'm just going to choose the one we were working on. Click on edit. Right, so, wow, this is amazing. As I mentioned, I hadn't tried this before, but we can see here that we can actually uh, use this plugin with uh, Yoast SEO. So I'm just gonna copy the title here 
and see if we can do everything that we normally do. So if I add my focus keyword, so I've just added my focus keyword. I'm going to click on uh, edit snippet, add my SEO title. So that's working. That's working too. So this seems to be working fine. Of course, I know this is just a quick test to see if it's working is fine. But here I can see here on my preview that um, things are looking pretty much okay. So from what I can see here, the Yoast SEO plugin actually works with um, Gutenberg, which is fantastic. Now, I'm not sure what other plugins work with, um, with this new uh, Gutenberg, but it will be very interesting to see uh, how many of these plugins actually work. I also tried LearnDash to see if you can actually create a, uh, an e-learning website. So over here, you can see if I go to my lessons, I'm just going to click on leave. And if I click on edit lesson one, you can see here that uh, we have all our options. But this is quite interesting because I still have the ability to, uh, to use the old M, uh, tiny MCE. Now, I'm not sure why this has not switched over to Gutenberg. Uh, so that's going to be interesting to see you know, what happens. But now if I click on um, this link to view the lesson, you can see it's showing as normal. Okay, so which is quite good. But as I mentioned, this is the old, um, this is the old uh, tiny MCE. So I'm not sure if this is going to be working uh, alongside the new Gutenberg. But for now, this is what we have, and the page, uh, the lesson page is showing. So it's going to be interesting to see. And uh, just keep an eye on this uh, channel. If you are not subscribed yet, do subscribe on this channel because I will be uh, updating these. Uh, WordPress Gutenberg uh, editor videos every now and again, uh, just so that you know we're up to date and we know what's going on with this. So just to summarize this, if you are a DV user or any other, any other page builder for that matter, it will work with those page builders. These page builder companies are actually working behind the scenes to make this integration work well. So don't panic, it will work. I'm not sure how things are going to be with the actual um, theme, I mean, how the theme actually works with, uh, with the Gutenberg, but right now uh, I, can, I can tell and I know that these plugins will definitely work uh, with uh, Gutenberg. And uh, also, as I mentioned, uh, if you're using, if you want to try it out, you're better off using the Astra theme because it gives you more options to uh, customize your page layout and also the ability to control the sidebars, which is brilliant. So overall, my view of uh, Gutenberg is I really like the direction they are taking because they're making the, the, the normal WordPress uh, sleek. It's definitely way much better uh, as compared to what we have with uh, the current Tiny MCE editor. However, if you're someone that uses uh, page builders for designing your websites, you are going to be disappointed because you, you will go in expecting uh, all those features and all those customizations, you will not get them. In fact, I've tried to do that uh, to do that here, and to be honest, it's unusable. So, if you're new to uh, to to WordPress, of course, you're going to be excited by this because it's it's a whole new way of uh, creating pages and the idea of adding blocks onto your website. This is going to be really cool, and also this opens up even more opportunities to get custom created um, blocks which you can use on your website. But as I mentioned, in my view, uh, this cannot be compared to currently what's out there uh, in terms of the page builders. I think the page builders are miles away in terms of what they can do for you as a designer. So that's my view. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, give me your views about uh, what you think about Gutenberg uh, and what it is uh, so far that you like about it. And if you are going to use it and ditch maybe your page builder that you're using. Okay, so that's it. That's all I have for you today. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and also give me a thumbs up. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one.